Genesis of this book, same like volume three. Jesus thinks that when actually is, uh, when actually does. And today on day 15, we're talking about teaching. Teaching. Uh, this is Jesus' central work, really. Uh, prior to his death on the cross, uh, his life uh, uh, after he takes on human flesh is given to and committed to this act of teaching. He goes around proclaiming the good news of God, uh, teaching people that the kingdom of God is near uh, and calling people to repent and believe the good news. And so, so much of what is recorded for us is Jesus teaching whether it's his disciples or the crowds, uh, he is showing them, telling them of who the Father is uh, and of God's great rescue plan. Now, Jesus, when he teaches, he isn't just some uh, moral teacher. Uh, that's how some people have uh, pictured Jesus uh, of 2,000 years ago. He's a moral teacher who comes along and he gives us some good advice and some um, uh Kind of helps us to understand how best to live in this world. But actually, so much more than that. He's not just a guy with some uh, good ideas. Because human teachers, human philosophers, human preachers, at best, we can pass on uh, the good things that we have heard. Uh, at best, uh, we can kind of make a guess uh, or uh, have an opinion or, or speculate about uh, the way the world works and what makes things tick and speak about humanity uh, and try to make sense of things. But not Jesus. He's not just spouting his opinions and his thoughts just like anyone else does. No, no. When Jesus speaks, he is speaking as the word of God, the creator of the universe, or in the Greek language, the logos, the logic, the Thought, the idea, the word, uh, the defining kind of idea uh, or behind all creation uh, and all of our human experience. He is the eternal son of the father, the one who is full of the spirit and who is therefore able to speak truth and reality. Uh, and we kind of see that, don't we? So often in the life of Jesus, he is able to speak right into the heart of a situation, to open up someone's heart and mind, to speak things uh, um, and know things before they even come into being. Because he is not just any old moral teacher. He is the son of the father, the creator of the universe, the one full of the spirit who speaks uh, truth. And yet the, the amazing thing is that when Jesus speaks and whenever he teaches, he teaches in a simple and an understandable way. He's not like some great big thinker using massive long words uh, and you've got to have a dictionary at hand to make sense of it. No, no. He speaks in a way which is simple, uh, easy to understand, uh, and he speaks to anyone and everyone. Right? He can speak to the wise and learned in the temples. Uh, he can speak to the low uh, the, uh, and the uneducated, uh, the kids on the street. He can speak to them all and make sense of life for them and to them. And one of the ways he does this is by way of the parables. Uh, all those famous stories uh, that Jesus told uh, to illuminate our minds, to help us to see something of this world and of God's activity in it. Uh, and uh, the amazing thing about these parables is that anyone can kind of make sense of the words and the stories and kind of be like, oh yeah, yeah I, I see what you're saying. But it also at the same time invites deeper thought and consideration. A deeper thought, not just for those who have the big brains and the uh, uh, big words and who have done loads of reading and think. No, just deeper consideration from anyone to think through, you know, what is Jesus teaching me here? Not just about <laughs> farming or trees or birds, but what is he teaching me about who God the Father is? What is he teaching me about how I can be right with God? Uh, what is he telling me about uh, the God's great rescue plan? Uh, and through these parables... He's not just teaching, uh, but he's separating. He is distinguishing between those who trust him and those who don't. Uh, we see that kind of as he speaks about uh, the nature of uh, parables and what they are in Matthew chapter 13, uh, quoting from Isaiah, speaking about those who hear and yet do not hear, those who see and yet do not see. Uh, that 
There are ways of engaging with the teaching of Jesus. There are ways of listening to his parables and never making sense of anything that Jesus is really saying. And so through those parables, he is separating those who would trust him and give themselves to following him and believing him and those uh, who don't. And his teaching, uh, well, it's not just resigned to um, his uh, years of life in a uh, human body uh, on earth 2,000 years ago. No, he, his teaching continues. Uh, even to this day, uh, some of the language he uses in John chapter 10 is that uh, he is this shepherd who speaks and his words, his teachings uh, are, are words which are recognized by his sheep. His sheep will hear his voice and will know the voice of the good shepherd and they'll follow him. And I guess our duty as Christians today uh, is to continue listening to that voice, to continue to hear uh, and to uh, uh, encounter uh, and to uh, heed the teaching of the voice of Jesus uh, through the study of the scriptures. Uh, the, the Bible uh, also is known as the word of God. Why is this known as the word of God when Jesus is also the word of God? Because the two are connected together. Through this, we meet with, we learn of, we encounter Jesus, the living word of God. And so we read and we study, we continue to hear his voice, uh, but not just for us to hear it, but it is for us to share uh, within the church as well as with those outside of the church. We are to, uh, in a sense, um, echo the voice of Jesus such that other people will not hear us but will hear him and hear all that he has to sh- say and all that he has to teach uh, there's uh, some uh, uh, there's this idea that there are those who have a particular role and a particular job to teach the word of God and I guess vicars uh, ministers uh, church leaders and teachers um uh, theological college uh, professors and lecturers, you know, those are the people who, who teach the word of God. But it's not just those with the, the particular role. Actually, the Bible's understanding of things is that we are all called to teach, all of us. And so there's this little verse in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 5, in verse 12, where Paul, uh, well, we don't know who the author of Hebrews is, actually, uh, where the author of Hebrews uh, is writing, to these Christians, he says, you know, you guys have been Christians for a while. You should be not just learning, but you should be teaching. You should have matured to the point where you are able to teach others. And so it is for us as Christians. We are all on this path of learning, heeding the teaching of Jesus. And not just learning it for ourselves, but learning so that we too would be able to echo the words of Jesus. That we would be able to share his teaching so that we would be able to teach uh, others. And as we teach, as we learn, uh, as Jesus says in the parable of the, the, the wise and the foolish builders, uh, we are to put his words into practice. So we're committed to learning the teaching, to sharing the teaching, and to living the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm.